Hello, welcome to a bonus edition of Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. I have a crossover with uh, Dane from Locked on Stars. So all that and more on the special episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin and San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first or second listen of the day today. Um, we're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can find us on YouTube as well. And it's double episode today, getting you guys ready for the Stars game tonight. Uh, Dane wanted to do a crossover and I couldn't say no whenever Dane asked. So, um, yeah, so we, we get into why the star, like Stars being red hot, Joe Pavelski potentially winning a cup for the Stars and kind of the game plan for each team and what we think is going to happen. So before you get into this crossover edition, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has got you covered this season more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, joining me now on today's episode of Locked On Stars, a special crossover edition: Locked On Stars and Locked On San Jose Sharks. JD Young covering the Sharks and the Barracuda. JD, how's it going? I know the the Sharks playing right now as we speak, recording this on Thursday night, tied at one with the Blues after one period. Uh, how's how's everything in uh, Sharks land? I know maybe not super bright, but still some fun stories with this team uh, through the first month of the season or so. Yeah, I mean, the results haven't been there, but the Sharks have been uh, kind of threading the needle of being exciting to watch recently but also losing games and if you're uh the fan of the tanking the sharks are doing it properly right now so yes it's it's been a interesting couple weeks for the sharks since the season started yeah it feels like every like at least once a week they're you know the kind of the at the focal point of the nhl beating you know a team that they shouldn't or at least being competitive with a team that maybe they shouldn't be competitive with but a huge part of that has to do with the play of one, Eric Carlson, who I, for one, am, am still shocked that with the numbers that he's put up through the early stages of this season, although he's definitely not at the end of his career, certainly not the player that he once was when he was winning Norris trophies in Ottawa. But what's it been like watching him play this well this season? I mean, he had 10 goals all of last year, and I believe he's now matched that through, what, 11, 12 games? Yeah, so the Sharks, as we're talking right now, they're playing their 15th game of the season. Carlson has 10 goals and 10 assists again, as he already has an assist tonight. So he has 20 points uh, in his first 14 plus games. And it's incredible to see Carlson playing this, at this level. And we've seen glimpses of it, you know, time from time here and there. You know, I, I jokingly called him an avocado this summer because when he's playing right, it's perfect. Right. But then there's like, if you miss the window too early or too late, it's, it's a mess, but he has been playing outstanding and I think it's because, you know, as much as you hate to say it, Brent Burns with between the, the dueling banjos between Brent Burns and Eric Carlson. Now there's a clear pecking order in the defenseman and it's Eric Carlson and it's everybody else. So Carlson's gets all the primo power play time. He gets all the, you know, the best ice time, best opportunities. And he is making the most uh, of it for a team that struggles to score goals uh, on a consistent basis. He has been the engine for this team. And um, I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know how long his paper mache groin can hold out, but I'm going to enjoy it while I can before uh, the dark, dark winter uh, falls upon Eric Carlson's uh, season. Yeah, hopefully it's something that can, you know, somewhat be sustainable just for his mm-hmm. sake and for Sharks fans sake as, as far as having, you know, fun players to watch. And he's certainly at the forefront of that right now. And uh, like, you know, like you said, he's already involved in this game against the Blues and certainly a player that I have to imagine that the stars are highlighting and looking to somehow contain, uh, even though many teams haven't been successful so far this season. Uh, yes. And I mean, I, I have to ask you, of course, with the stars, they've gotten off to a pretty good start. Joe Pavelski, 75 years old, continuing to play like he's one of the best players in the NHL. Um, how is this man doing it? I mean, we 
you, know, you look back now at hindsight when the Sharks kind of made the decision of signing a much younger Evander Kane instead of re-signing Joe Pavelski. And the Sharks have egg on their face because of it, or because one Evander Kane, we know exactly what Evander Kane has done, but two, Joe Pavelski is playing like, like he's beating the crap out of father time right now. It's insane. Yeah, it, it's, it's unreal. And I think the expectations were high for him coming in this season because he set, you know, new career highs, I think in goals and assists last season uh, and, and points as well as a result. And so, yeah, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, we see <laughs> even this year across other sports. I mean, it seems like there's kind of a, a changing of the guard in the NFL as far as quarterbacks. And here's Joe Pavelski, like you said, just one of the oldest players in the league and not missing a beat. And I think a big part of it is he's playing alongside Rope Hintz and Jason Robertson, who are two of the best young players in this league. And so there's that aspect of it. I think that being reunited with his old coach, someone that Sharks fans are very familiar with and Pete DeBoer. I think that both of those guys, you know, there's probably a little bit of extra motivation for them coming in each and every day, knowing mm -hmm. that one DeBoer, neither of them have won a cup, but I mean, Joe's time you have to imagine is running out. And so there's kind of this idea of, you know, DeBoer is looking for his first one and I don't know who knows how long he's going to coach and Pavelski also looking for his first. And so I, I think there's something to be said there as well, just because there was, from what I understand, a really good relationship between those two back whenever, you know, the Sharks were kind of, you know, in their heyday in the mid 2010s and making it to the cup finals. So I, I think it's a mixture of things, but it's also just, you know, the cliche, he works hard, he takes care of himself and it, it pays off on the ice night in and night out. Yeah. And I think for Pravelski, a guy like that, where he was never the most athletically gifted guy. So you don't see those things deteriorate. Right. And he was always I'm just going to outwork you and I'm just going to be smarter than you. And I'm just going to work harder than you and grind you out more. And we've seen like, that's why I think his game lasts so long because again, Joe Pavelski, not known for his skating, uh, but he's going to get to the right place at the right time. And he's going to be smarter than you. And he's going to know, yeah, he's just going to outwork you. And it's, it's, I'm glad to see as someone who's a big Joe Pavelski fan. Uh, I know my former co-host, Never really liked Joe Pavelski, thought he was overrated, but uh, I am glad that Joe Pavelski is thriving and, and it'd be pretty awesome to see him if he lift the cup one day. But um, yeah, it's 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 good to see him doing his thing. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And, you know, it it's, would make for a very interesting story for his career overall of being with a team for so long like the Sharks. But you wanted a cup with a team like the Stars. You, you like which team is he you know remembered for the most i think that that makes it an interesting discussion and he, he's just an easy guy to root for i think a lot of people share you know the sentiment you have like you want to see him do well just because he's a good guy good presence in the locker room and the star social media team loves to share content of his family as well and so stars fans eat that up too yes um what do you i know the stars have had some goaltender issues guys have been kind of what's kind of the story with with the goalies right now as, as we're getting ready uh for a game on friday yeah it, it's a weird situation right now but i think that we're kind of at the the end of the storm uh jake ottinger got injured i guess about two weeks ago i think this saturday will have been about two weeks uh something i think with lower body ankle something with his foot got pulled from a game uh or really took himself out of a game against the new york mm -hmm. rangers and then it's been scott wedgwood uh, for the last four games or so in net and the stars went three and one. So he did his job Won you know, the majority of the games that he started as the backup, but Ottinger skated on Thursday morning with the team in practice and coach DeBoer kind of hinted at the idea that he could play, but they're going to evaluate him a little bit more on Friday morning and into the afternoon. So uh, not necessarily a game time decision from what I'm seeing, but seems like there's a good chance we could see Jake Ottinger back in net. Uh, and even if not, I think if Wedgwood needs one more start, uh, to make sure that Jake's good to go, you know, for the longevity is is the key mm -hmm. here. Uh, I, I think the stars would be OK in that situation because Scott has done uh, pretty well so far this season in his you know backup role. He had played a couple games even before Jake went down. So I know stars fans are excited to see Ottinger back in net just because before he He's went really down, good. you could you could say <laughs> that he was the best goalie in the league. And you're not going to hear an argument against that from me or really anyone else who supports the stars. So uh, I know I'm excited to see him back as well because. He, he looked, uh, you know, like a man on a mission in the playoffs last year, and he hasn't really missed a beat. Yeah, and expect James Reimer in net for the Sharks. Um, Capo Kakinen made the start on Thursday against the Blues. Uh, Reimer has been the uh, better of the two goalies between Capo Kakinen and 
and Reimer, but uh, you, you know, we've seen with him, he started out really hot, but it has been kind of a little bit of a uh, kind of cracks in the foundation with James Reimer recently. And he's kind of given up a couple more goals than we're used to seeing from him uh, recently. So we'll, you know, expect to see Reimer in net um, has had trucks have, did have a quite a bit of rest. So probably going to get prime James Reimer uh, against the stars. So, yeah. And, you know, I, I think that that makes for an interesting matchup. I know Reimer sometimes has shut down the stars in the past, and there's been times where the stars have gotten the best of him. So she certainly makes for an interesting story and, you know, would love to do dig in uh, to this sharks roster a little bit, but first I know we got to say thank you to a sponsor of today's episode, bet online sponsoring today's episode. Uh, they're the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the best and latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer, esports. They've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those as well at betonline. And they are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So you can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. You can even bet on this Stars Sharks game if you do feel so inclined. I don't have the numbers on that right now, but I have to imagine the Stars at home uh, that, you know, the sports book's got to be favoring the Stars there. But if you're feeling a little bit spicy and want to put some money on the Sharks, you never know. You never know. What I do not happen. recommend. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here from from your local San Jose Sharks expert. Does not recommend, but you can. Uh, it's your money and you can do with with it, whatever you well please, but you want to do it at betonline.net because betonline is where the game starts. All right. Thank you again for listening to today's crossover episode, Locked on Stars, Locked on Sharks. Uh, the Stars returning home after three games on the road to take on a Sharks team that is at the bottom of the standings, but as we talked about, have some good players like Eric Carlson. Timo Meyer seems to kind of finally be hitting his stride uh, after what seems like a little bit of a slow start to the season, but Looking at this roster, JD, there's a lot of names I'm not super familiar with. A lot of guys that I know are young or relatively new to the NHL. And so who are some guys on this team that you think are under the radar players that could be good for the Sharks this season or that could be really nice key pieces for them, you know, down the road when the rebuild is hopefully at an end, just to kind of give a little bit of insight to the Stars fans who might not know the Sharks, you know, system uh, like someone like yourself would. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the, the Sharks... You know, the engine of their team right now is Timo Meyer, uh, Tomas Hurdle, and Eric Carlson. Um, and then you have kind of some of the mainstay guys like uh, Logan Couture and Kevin LeBanc, who've been around for a little while. But uh, general manager Mike Greer this offseason, he kind of made it his mission to try to add a lot of depth pieces to the bottom six, which has been a sore spot for the Sharks recently. And, you know, they would either have guys who are too old or guys that were too young and too inexperienced and throwing them into these roles that they weren't ready for. And right now the sharks actually don't have like any rookies really playing um, on their team. A lot of they're kind of letting those guys like they're, they're fun, exciting prospects like Thomas Bordolo and William Eklund, who both got tasted in NHL last year. Right now they're playing on their AHL team in the uh, San Jose Barracuda and kind of letting these guys marinate a little bit. So this is kind of a different from what we've seen with, with sharks before they would more or less kind of rush guys in if they were ready or not to try to play in the NHL because they really didn't have any other options, but none of the guys that they added this off season, you know, they, they traded for uh Luke Cunningham from the Preds. Um, they signed Oscar Lindblom, who was a former flyers player. They got Nico Sturm. who has been a great signing. Um, he was a former wild and then he ended up on the abs last year. Um, all these guys are just kind of their kind of patchwork guys until the sharks are ready. All their young guys are kind of ready to, 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 to kind of make the jump. So, um Nico Sturm's probably been the best of the new guys. You know, I, I think he's got like five uh five goals so far this season. And he's been their third line center, has been really kind of solidified that spot, which has been a revolving door the last couple uh years. Nick Benito has been was playing there and he's lost that job. And uh, I think he's gonna be the four C uh right now after playing three C, two, he's been on the second line wing, but now he's uh, kind of settled into this four C spot. But you know, it's it's just a lot of these guys that are just kind of NHL dudes who are don't really get you too excited, but they're going to come in, they're going to do their job, and but there's there's just not much of a ceiling with a lot of these guys. I gotcha, and it's interesting you talk about you know so many of the premier young guys playing with the Barracuda right now. Is that something that you personally think is the right move, or would you want to see them at the NHL this season? Because I know this is a season where the Sharks are expected to finish at the bottom 
Uh, do you think that they maybe get moved near the end of the season? Are, are you, I guess, a fan of kind of how this is being handled? Or do you think it could maybe be handled a little bit differently? No, I mean, I, I totally get it. I I like watching young, fun players. But, you know, at the same time, if they're going to come up and they're going to play 10 minutes a night, and we know David Quinn, especially with his time with the Rangers, where he has a little bit of a short leash with with these young players, or he tends to have a short leash. I don't want to. But uh, let them go play Barracuda. They can go play, you know, their 15, 18, 20 minutes a night. Go have fun down there and kind of learn all the, like, in and ins and outs of pro hockey and kind of work on those rookie mistakes and then kind of build up their other skill sets. So it's like, if you're not scoring goals, what else can you do? So um, they'll get, they will play at some point this year. They're Bordolo and Eklund are, are, are just too good to stay down the AHL all year. And I'm sure the Sharks were going to be very active sellers at the deadline. So uh, Sharks fans, we will get our, our Bordolo and Eklund. But uh, for now, I mean, I think it's a good recipe of, trying to get a premier draft position right now and not ruin uh, the kids. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it right now. So yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I know it's kind of different depending on the GM and depending on, you know, the rest of the coaching staff from every team as well. You know, some teams might want to throw their young guys in and make it trial by fire. But I, I think that there is some worth in, you know, being patient. Uh, like we mm. said, longevity, kind of the key here with what the sharks are doing, not looking to have immediate success per se, but, you know, maybe four or five, six years from now, you look back at this time and you say, you know, the, the waiting was worth it uh, with some of these young guys that could potentially be, you know, stars one day in this league. Not Dallas stars necessarily, but <laughs> no. superstars, if you will. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's been a tough couple of years, but you can kind of start to see the light at the end of the tunnel for some of the, you know, for the Sharks here. And once their cap starts to get cleared up a little bit here and some of these young guys that you've been waiting on uh, kind of start to make their impact. Um hopefully start to be playing relevant hockey again here in the next couple of years. So for the stars though, I mean, this is a kind of a good mix of a very veteran laden team, but you also have a lot of young stars, you know, kind of bursting on the scene over the past couple of years. I know you have Colorado who's kind of the, the, you know, the Goliath in the, the division, but it feels like the stars might be a little slept on here when it comes to being a potential kind of Stanley cup dark horse. Yeah, I, I think that's a great like position to put them in now is is Dark Horse. I think they've been great. And I know there's a lot of Stars fans that are, you know, you have the ones, of course, that are on the extreme of this team is going to the Stanley Cup finals, which I think they have the potential. But like you said, there's a lot of really good teams. Colorado uh, is, you know, started off kind of slow, but they're starting to kind of pick up some ground and kind of figuring out who they are post winning the cup and, you know, post Kadri and, and so a few other key pieces as well. Uh, and of course, without their captain Landis Gog. So I, I think that there is a case to be made for the Stars being a top three team in the Central Division, which I've been predicting since, you know, the draft back in the summer and was called crazy by even a few other of our hosts on this network. Uh, and, and it is early in the season. So, I, you know, I can't. No victory laps, 13 games in the season. Left. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Especially in a division where St. Louis is in last and Chicago, I believe, is fourth at the moment. So. It, it's still way too early to tell, but if this early season it is any indication, I think the Stars can certainly be in the, a competition for a top three spot in the division. Uh, you know, who else is going to be there? Still kind of feels like it's up in the air. But yeah, I, I think, you know, the Stars are performing above expectations, which that just seems to be the Pete DeBoer special as he comes in in the first season with his team. He's like, let's go to heights that this team has either never been to before or hasn't yep. been to in, in, you know, recent years. Uh, although the stars didn't go to the cup a few years ago, that still feels like, you know, a whole other lifetime ago that that happened. So it, it's a good start to the season and one that I think stars fans, you know, could have seen happening, but weren't, you know, this wasn't a certainty that we were going to see a start like this with an explosive offense that's, you know, scoring three, four, five goals a game. And also, you know, a defense and goaltending that on, on most nights is only surrendering one or two goals. So it's a really good place to be right now. And, uh, you know, the hot start allows them to, you know, maybe if, you know, if they have a slip up later in the year, you can kind mm. of lean back on this hot start and still be competitive in the division. Whereas last year it was a slow start and the stars just had to chip away uh, and didn't clinch a playoff spot until there was like two games left in the season. Yeah. And, and two, especially without having Ottinger for the past couple of weeks, being able to kind of still stack wins, um, that's going to be huge. And, you know, going back to Ottinger again, like, that guy, we, we saw he almost stole a, a series from the Flames last year against you know, the Flames were a much more talented team and he almost stole that series, single-handedly stole that series. So, 
you know, you you can see where if the stars, if they're aggressive at the deadline, Colorado, I think Colorado is going to be Colorado. That That's going to be the, but if you look at the one Colorado weakness, right, it's that goaltending position. And you think the stars would definitely have an edge there if they win, if they do play in the playoffs. So we, you never know, man, you never know. So yeah, it would be fun to see uh, Joe Pavelski win that cup. So. Yeah, absolutely. It would be it'd be great for a lot of people on the team, especially some of the, a lot of the veterans, especially. But yep. Pavelski, I think NHL fans as a whole would like to see him more. And then, you know, Jamie Ben would lift it and then they would all be really sad again. Stars <laughs> fans would be happy, but the rest of the NHL probably not as happy to see Jamie Ben win a cup as they would be Joe Pavelski. <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to go down that road. But anyway, uh <laughs> All right, so let's get into the actual game. So what do you think is the kind of the the key or the formula for the Stars to win this game? I, I'm going to assume that Jake Ottinger is playing, and I'm historically very bad at picking who's starting games because I normally do record the evening before games happen, but especially Same. with the yep. guy who's been injured, you never know. But let's say he is starting. I think the key is to help him get reacclimated to playing You know, NHL games. He's been practicing and rehabbing, but... You know, we, we know from watching games that it's always different. And even though he was playing really well before the injury, the stars skaters in front of him need to do a good job of giving him, you know, a lead to play with. The offense needs to do very well. They had a really bad night in Winnipeg on Tuesday, so they need to rebound there. And then the defense needs to do a good job of trying to limit the scoring opportunities, whether that's blocking shots or, you know, winning puck battles and, you know, not allowing the Sharks to just pepper the goal. Uh, you know, if Jake Ottinger starts and, you know, he he just needs a little bit of time to get rolling. I think it's understandable given how long it's been since he's played. But that that's really going to be the key to the game is give Ottinger a chance to win and put him in a good position and you'll probably find success. Uh, and I think this start, what's different about this Stars team as compared to last year is there's a little bit more confidence going into a game like this. Last year, it was a toss up with the really bad teams. Montreal beat the Stars at home. The Devils last year who are good now, but this is last mm-hmm. year's Devils beat the Stars at home. So that this team was notorious for playing down to their competition. And I, I think, you know, w- with all due respect to the Sharks, I think the Stars have a better roster and have a, a better chance on paper to win this game. And so, and one that they need to win because then they're going on a three game road trip right after. So put Ottinger in a good position and he's going to hopefully help carry the team to victory. And what, what would you say is, is the same thing for the Sharks? What if the star, if the Sharks are wanting to win this game, if they're wanting to get revenge on their old coach and old captain, what is the the key to the game for them? Yeah, I mean, the kind of the Sharks formula for success recently has been kind of just hang in there at even strength and then try to win the special teams battle. Um, the Sharks penalty kill is one of the best in the league. It, surprisingly, I think they're second right now in their their PK. Um, but then the Dallas uh, power play is also very, very good. So that should be a really interesting matchup. Um, the Sharks power play has started to get going a little bit here recently, but this is going to be probably their biggest t- test they faced it recently. Um, I know this this Dallas BK is also clicking at a high rate right now as well. So um, you're for the Sharks, you're going to have to hang in there at 5 one five, and then hopefully you can win the special teams battle and James Reimer continues to save your bacon as he's been doing for the past year plus now that, that he's been with the Sharks. So, um, you know, and it's going to have to be the top guys. Timo Meyer, Tomas Hurdle, Eric Carlson. If those guys, they they have been very good. If they can continue to perform at the level that they've been performing, um, and then you hopefully you can win the special teams battle. That's going to be your road to success. So, but the way the the Stars team that is one of the best teams that the, the Sharks have seen this so far this young season, and the Sharks they have been playing pretty good. But I mean, you've had three shoot, uh, shootout losses, one to two to the ducks and one to the Panthers. And then you blow a game to the lightning in the last minute. So um, I just, I don't see much opportunity for success for the sharks in this game. So, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned the, the special teams battle I think that there is potential. We could see the sharks on the power play a lot. I, I was trying to find it and had no luck, but it, you know, this time last week, the stars, I believe were first in the league in penalty minutes. They've done a little bit better as of late. I think they only had, two or four on Tuesday night against the Jets. So, but you know, there's been games where they have 10 or 12 or 14 penalty minutes. So they're, they're undisciplined at times. So there is a chance that we could see the sharks on the man advantage quite a bit. And if that's the case, I think the stars are, they're going to have to lean into that PK, but you know, a penalty kill can only do so well for so long uh, because you're you're literally down a man. 
Yeah, the stars are averaging 10 penalty minutes, uh, 10 minutes and four seconds of penalty minutes per game. Um, the Sharks, 747. So the Sharks are tend to be a little bit more, um, you know, more likely to get uh, not get penalized. So uh, when it comes to actual like raw penalties, uh, 55 penalties for the Sharks uh, drawn, 47 taken. So the Sharks are, yeah, like you said, more likely to be on the power play. Um, but again, this is a, I know the Sharks power play has been playing much better, especially with David Quinn inserting his new system. They were very, very slow to start, but over the past couple of weeks, they, they've kind of started getting things clicking, especially with Eric Carlson running it. Uh, but there's a big test for their for them against this very, very uh, stout uh, Stars penalty kill. Yeah, it, it should be an interesting matchup there. And I, yeah, I, I agree. I think it could very well come down to who wins the special teams and who can hold on longer on the five on five because the Stars five on five is good. But there are moments where it can go flat and, and you mm -hmm. know, they miss their shots or they're just sloppy with the puck. And Stars fans know that that's what we saw a good dosage of on Tuesday night. But back at home, they I feel like it's just the splits as far as home and away games have been heavily in favor of the road for the stars early in the season. So they play better at home. They, they did that. I mean, last year and you would expect that of a NHL team to play better in their own buildings. So Friday night fans haven't been to a game in a while, so it should be a fun atmosphere and hopefully a, a fun and entertaining game. And, you know, if the sharks fans, if the majority of them are in tank mode and wanting, you know, as many losses as possible, maybe it can still be an entertaining game there. And maybe we can get a, a Carlson hat trick and a, you know, a Pavelski hat trick or something. Oh, that would just be, be the, the ultimate <laughs> stars sharks matchup. Yes. Uh, so who do you got winning this game? I, I'm going to go with the stars and I'll, I'll go ahead and throw out, I'll say five, two, uh, but Carlson's likely getting one of those sharks goals. And I think as far as I like to try to predict first goal. And I think I've, I think I've gotten it once this year and it was Jason oh, nice. Robertson. He's a, a safe bet, but I'll go, I'll go rope a in this one. Yeah. I got uh stars four to two. Um, I think Pavelski gets two, um, and I'm going to go Tomas Hurdle and I'll go Couture, uh, I think scoring for the Sharks, but yeah, four, two, um, we'll say, I'd say it's going to be a pretty entertaining game though. So I, I would hope so. And I, I would think so. I, you just never know what you're going to get. And that's the beauty of hockey. Sometimes you just walk into a, a game and you get one of the best games you've seen all year. So yes, you just never know. You got to have that confidence every, every single game in an 82 game season. Or sometimes you watch the Sharks for a long time and you're just like, oh, God, I got to do this again. Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> hey, you, like you said, though, light at the end of the tunnel. and Light at the know. end of the tunnel. Connor <laughs> Bedard and Teal is going to look amazing. Connor Bedard, uh, William Eklund slinging passes to Connor Bedard. It will be worth it. So that's that's the hope right there. <laughs> yeah. you, you mentioned the Teal. How, what are your thoughts on the the new jerseys for the Sharks, especially the, the home all Teal look? Are you a fan or not so much? So when I first saw them, I wasn't a fan. And then when you I saw them like on TV, actually like in game, I was like, okay, these look cool. And then when I went to the actual tank and saw them, I was like, oh, okay, those are awesome. Um, I do love the away ones. I ended up uh, ordering an away one with the with the white uh, white black and a little bit of teal. Um, but the all teal look, um, it grew on me, especially once you see them in person. Uh, it's it's a very clean look. So. Yeah, I, I think that's where I lie on it. I saw it and I was like, oh, these are okay. And then the more I've seen them on TV, I like them. Obviously, they'll be wearing the roads, but I, I have liked the roads ever since they announced them. The roads so are I'm, oh, yes. I'm, I'm excited to see those. And I, I feel the same way. You talk about the all teal, the, the all black that the stars do, which I think they are wearing those in, the, in this game on Friday. Those had to grow on me a little bit as well. And I know some people, stars fans and non stars fans alike, still don't like them too much, but it just kind of depends on who you ask. Yeah, and uh, I'm really excited though for the 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 kind of the seals jersey that's supposed to be coming here in the next couple of weeks. So um, very very excited for those. Uh, I've tried to talk to my wife and to let me buy one, uh, but she uh, she quickly put the kibosh on that after I've just bought a, a new uh, away jersey. So yeah, you, yeah, you got to take you, you, <laughs> you got to take take what you can get, I guess, yes, with NHL jerseys because yes. they're very expensive. But JD, where can uh, Stars fans, if they're interested in getting any additional information on the Sharks, where can they find you, the show, uh, and think everything else that that you guys do at Locked On Sharks? Uh, you can find, of course, the show on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked On Sharks. You can listen wherever you get podcasts. So if you want to uh, follow a tanking team and see what that's like, uh, Locked On Sharks is uh, where to go. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole where it's mostly stupid jokes, but um, people for some reason like it. So, yes. Hey, you got to get you got to get the, the stupid jokes out while you can. We don't know how much longer Twitter's going to be around. Yeah, so it might be it might have been uh, turned off while we were recording this. So who knows? I, I honestly would not complain.
I would nope. not complain one bit. <laughs> uh, Dane, where can the people find you? Yeah, we're the, the same way as far as podcasting goes. Free and available on podcasting platforms on YouTube. Uh, we just crossed a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is super cool. So if any Congrats. Sharks fans Welcome feel so, club. yeah, yes. it, it feels good. If any, any Sharks fans feel so inclined to, if you want to pick a team that isn't trying to tank at the moment, we, we'd love to have you along for the ride and social media at Dane double underscore Lewis. It's the same way. If I'm not tweeting about the stars, it's movies, other Dallas sports, the Cowboys, you know, they're a very frustrating team to follow. So you'll, you'll get a little bit of that. And then just at locked on stars, Twitter and Instagram.